Good morning. Welcome to the Episcopal Churches in Lowell's services of morning prayer online during this season of Epiphany. Please bring your prayers, your intercessions, your concerns, your joys to this time of worship and prayer. If you might wish to worship in person, St. Anne's and St. John's offer more Holy Eucharist in each church building at 10 a.m. The Spanish language Eucharist at St. Anne's is at noon. All indoor worship follows the safety protocols of the Diocese of Massachusetts, including masks, sanitizer, and social distancing. We follow the service in the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer, and we add some prayers and canticles from the Church of England's book, Daily Prayer. The three scripture readings are those appointed for the Sunday Holy Eucharist each week. Now take a deep breath and prepare yourself to worship. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the people have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praises to the ends of the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night is past, the day now lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for the third Sunday after Epiphany is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous skins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First reading for this third Sunday of the Epiphany season is taken from the Old Testament book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together in the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above the people. And when he opened it, everyone stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. They bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with, the fa with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God without interruption. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading and Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord our God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those who have nothing. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, His glory. The glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. Arise, shine, for your light has come. His glory is upon you. But over you shall rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Arise, shine, for your light has come, his glory is upon Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Arise, shine, for your light has come, His glory is upon you. Will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction.
destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. Arise, shine, for your light has come. His glory is upon you. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. Arise, shine, for your light has come. His glory is upon you. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, beginning on the, in the 12th chapter. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one body, of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, given the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Song of the Covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. The Gospel appointed for this third Sunday of Epiphany is taken from chapter 4 of Luke's Gospel, beginning at verse 14. 
Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this teaching has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our readings for this day take us to many topics. While the Gospel portions would have us focus on who is Jesus and what was it that defined his mission or his ministry. Reading the law after the return to Israel is important. It sets the former exiles back on the path that they are expected to walk every day. Paul's idea of the body as having many members, as does our physical person, is helpful in recognizing how we can live together and recognize and work out our interdependence. But the Gospel reading, in that reading, Luke reminds us that Jesus has been to the wilderness, has endured the temptations and survived by resistance, and now has left the wilderness, come back into Galilee, has been visiting various towns, and his reputation has been growing and is very positive. He comes to Nazareth, his hometown. He enters the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and Luke tells us this was a habit of his. He's asked to read, likely the lesson appointed for that particular Sabbath from the Old Testament prophets. There are usually three readings in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and the prophets have a place in that schedule. He finds the place where the reading is to be found on the scroll, not in a book. And he reads from Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. We can pause here for a moment and look back to earlier when Jesus has come to John and received from John the baptism of preparation for the Mighty One who is to come. And as Jesus comes up out of the water, he sees the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descending in the form of a dove, and it rests on him, Jesus. This is the anointing of Jesus, if you will, the designating 
of Jesus. This is the empowerment of Jesus to carry out his vocation as the Messiah, as the Christ of God. Here's the moment when Jesus is first known to be Messiah, sent to tell that God is acting to begin the process by which all will be set right according to the will of the Father. Those who are in captivity will be set free. Those who are blind will have their sight restored. Those who are oppressed will be relieved and allowed to go free. The year of the Lord's favor is to be proclaimed. Having read these words, what is sometimes called a manifesto, Jesus hands the book back, or the scroll, I'm sorry, back to the attendant and sits down. This reading is in a very deep way an outline for the ministry that will unfold in the rest of Luke's narrative, which we call the Gospel of Luke. Then in the power of the Spirit, Jesus says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled. He claims the vocation given him by his Father. It is at first a continuation of the ministry of John the Baptist, an emphasis on repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Later, it will change its focus as Jesus grows in his understanding of the fullness of his vocation. He will come to understand that he is the servant of God the servant whose life and destiny is outlined in large part in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53, some of which we read on Good Friday almost every year. And Jesus comes to realize that the servant will be the sacrifice, the Lamb of God, to set us free from the powers of Satan, sin, and death. That part of his understanding is not yet here, nor is it framed by the words of Isaiah, which we have heard this morning. We should recall the words of the Gospel of John, however, where Jesus tells his disciples, I have come not to be served, but to to serve, to be the servant, to be the lamb, as John says, who takes away the sin of the world. That realization comes later, probably three years after this event in Nazareth. So what does this mean for us in January 2022? living in the city of Lowell in Massachusetts. For me, as a disciple of Jesus and as a pastor, it means paying the fullest attention possible to the words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. As much as you have done it to one of the least of these, you have done it to me. Done what? Well, Matthew says that if we are faithful in our continuing the ministry of Jesus, we will feed the hungry, we will clothe the naked, we will shelter the homeless. This is a very tight, compressed summary, and it can be expanded in any number of directions in many, many ways to include resisting the injustice, paying a fair wage for workers, providing safe schools for everyone, ensuring that no child ever goes to bed hungry, 
that everyone is, has access to fundamentally good medical care. And these are just some of the possibilities. You can make your own list. As I have emphasized in the last two months in these morning prayer services, there are lo local agencies which provide good news to the poor around us. One of these is the Merrimack Valley Food Bank, who serves some 69,000 people every month. That's the equivalent of the city of Lowell seven times in a year. Another agency that comes to mind is the House of Hope. They serve those who are evicted from their former homes, who are victims often of domestic danger. They take in the children of these evicted women and provide safe and stable patterns of life for the wife or the woman and the child. You, I'm sure, understand that these are serious ministries <coughs> and that they require strong support from those who have the resources to share and to help others. We have always the option to decide, will we help? Or won't we? It's in us, on us, for us to decide. Let us pray. Holy God, give us ears to hear and hearts to love so that we may be eager to help our neighbors both near and far. Enable us always to be ready to share the good news that Jesus proclaims in Nazareth. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday after the Epiphany. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may per perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen and continuing to pray for the unity of all the churches. Almighty Father, whose blessed Son before his passion prayed for his disciples that they might be one, as you and he are one, grant that your church, being bound together in love and obedience to you, 
may be united in one body by the one spirit, that the world may believe in him whom you have sent, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who created all peoples in your image, we thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is the world, true light, its captain of salvation. The day star clear and bright of every race and nation. New light, new hope awakes for all who own this way. Freedom, her bondage breaks. sunrise to its setting. When Christ is thrown as Lord, all shall forsake their fear. To plowshare beat the sword, to pruning hook the spear. One Lord in one great name, unite us all who Cast down our pride and shame that hinder to enthrone me. The world has waited long, has traveled long in pain. To heal its ancient wrong, come Prince of Peace and Rain. the intercessions for the season of Epiphany. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the Lord, that the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord, that the church may discover again that unity which is the Father's will. Let us pray to the Lord, that the nations of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. That the whole creation groaning in travail may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way and our concerns and those for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love 
in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.